and he'll answer the phone. Phone will be there. Warren, thank you so much for uh, subjecting yourself to this because it's going to be a long campaign, and we'll do a weekend for you. Thank you, Mr. Warren. It's my people. Let it clap. I didn't see you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Ron. It's a privilege to be to talk after Mr. Ron Alamore. Such a great guy, a good Samaritan. I'd like to thank everybody for being here tonight. Each and every one of you are going to, in somehow or some ways, going to affect this campaign. This is a campaign that is for the people of Iberia Parish, not just District 5. This is where the start happens. It happens with the ground roots of the people. And I always promised when I ran for election that I would listen to the people and talk to the people. And what they're saying is like I've never seen before. When I first ran, there were minor issues. Now, there's a dysfunctional government. People are upset. Uh, they don't see public works as often as they want to see it. And that's the, that's the heart and body of Iberia Parish government, is that when a dish needs to be cleaned, they want to see something happen within our parish. So that is a pledge that I take, is that I want to restore faith in our government, because it starts at the local government and works up. So the number one thing I want to do is the creation of infrastructure. Because with infrastructure, it brings businesses. It brings competitive services of businesses with St. Martin and Lafayette. And we've got to be competitive to draw businesses that have left to bring them back home. Because I hear Parish is very rich in resources. So infrastructure is our number one thing. Number two, with infrastructure, bring the businesses. Businesses create jobs that bring families. Families pay taxes. So with taxes being paid, we can do a lot more things, is, is a lot more things such as drainage and other resources that we need within the parish to be functional. So my pledge to you today is that when I start tomorrow, walking the blocks more and more, is that I want to get everybody's opinion. And I would say at the end of the day, not everyone will get what they want. But it's what's best for our parish. So I want to go around and just to ask a few people what it is that you want your parish to do for you. That's the number one thing. So if anyone has any suggestions here, anyone, just one thing. Somebody got to have something. I mean, not everyone. What? A, what? Quit spending money on that camera. <laughs> and I hear that every single day. Every single day they say there's eleven. Every single day, eleven. Bridges are out in our parish, and we've spent eight million dollars of parish money in a private entity competing with private vendors in this parish. So that's number one: is RV park. You got to either bail out or find someone to take the spot of that RV park. Anyone else? Yes. Yeah, how about the news? Yesterday they talked about shutting down the end park, but they want to make an indoor pool. And I was hoping that Tony, indoor pool. I was hoping that Tony Migas would have still been here when this this discussion came about. Is and then Jimmy's here too, and Jimmy works with the city, and I don't want to call him out too much, but he deals with this day to day too. Is that Iberia Parish residents? Don't matter if you live within the city or the parish, we all pay parish taxes. And when they talk about well, that's the city's problem. The city residents pay parish taxes also. So it comes from the parish to address these problems. Now, I know there's talk about consolidations of services with the parish and the city. The main thing, Lauren, is we all got to work together. And with the pool, we're trying to get the school board on, we're trying to get the parish government, and we're trying to get the city all working together where we can have a nice facility. Two pools, 67 years old. Antiquated. It takes a lot of money to operate. So if we can get one pool, we're going to dump money into something else. I, I can see it get the pool, but it's just a time for building. You got a hole in the road where you got to go buy and tie every three, four months because you hit a pothole, you know? Now I want to just say government can't be fixed overnight. But this is a start when the people speak. And when you bring the parish back to the people, then we start to have a function a function within our parish. Now, I want to say this. We can't continue to blame the past. Because we've got to start with a new strain. We need to form a new government of the people. It started like this. This is what formed our country. A, a discussion around the table. And this is where I think local government needs to take place again. Because we can get healthy discussions from people who pay taxes. This guy, Mr. Ray, if, I, if you don't mind, 
we talked just short, just short the last few times we met, and he said just like everyone else is that he's displeased. He's a business owner himself, and he relies within our parish, and we rely on him to pay taxes, and he pays you guys. This is where it starts at, our businesses. If we can't be competitive with St. Martin, where we're sitting at today, how can we be competitive for our kids in the future? So, Ray, as a business owner, where do we start? I guess changing the way that it's being run now, changing to a function of government, uh, to where our tax dollars are utilized properly. What, Mr. Rawson? What makes you think that you, a little guy like you, a young man like you, you have enough energy? I got to, it. Hold it. Wait, wait a while. You have enough energy to change this with what the corruption is in Iberia Parish? I'm sitting here today. Do you have that? To answer that question. I have it here. I'm sitting here today. I called upon all of you today. I, the last time I ran, I took it on myself, but I realized that then. It can't just be me. It has to be us all. It has to be everyone. It can't be one person can't make a team. Everyone has to. Can you push that? I'm here tonight. I'm here tonight. I'm, you're going to be that voice? I'm no, but you're here tonight. But can you push the nine other men, whatever they are up there, to make it go? I mean. But they may not be there come a year from now. Well, that's what that's we going to change. Well, well, you, we you're saying that you can change this and that and everything. You have enough background, enough. I think I can. It? I might not have but just one vote, but if I got the people behind me, then that vote starts to turn into two votes, and then it starts to turn into three votes, because only the voice gets bigger. It doesn't get smaller. It, and it's exactly my point. So it's like a disease now. It's only spread, and people want change. Every time I knock that door, there's always one negative thing to say. And when I tell them, I said, okay, what's one positive thing we can do? Can't do nothing positive because it's been like this for so long. But that's not the way we look at it. We look at it as if, okay, well, let's change it today for a better tomorrow. And, and this is what we're trying to do. This is why I've asked everyone to come tonight. It's not about come and give campaign money or come and give a vote. Because if you don't vote for me, that's okay. But at the end of the day, vote for your future, your kids, your grandkids. My little girl here, I want her to have the same opportunity that I have in my neighborhood to grow up in a sound neighborhood. That we didn't have to worry about gunshots, people robbing, stealing, theft. That's what Iberia Parish is about. It's that we're sound. We're, we're a structuralized government for the past 200 years of existence. And I don't want it to end in the next 10, 15 years if we can prevent it from that. And it's still time now. Obviously, y'all believe in the same things I believe in. You came tonight. If you were, if you were satisfied, you'd never come. So, with that being said, if anyone else would like to make any more comments, here's the time now, guys, because I'm working for you. Right now, the Wine Council is struggling with financial budget. They do not know how to budget at all. And it's uh, pretty much a buddy system. Good old buddy system to have. Had my back, I've had your back. But I want to know how will you advise or Show that better ways to budget for our council to get better roads, get better Well, first is I've got to make allies in the council. Allies that support a better Iberia Parish. And when I mean better, like I told you, better infrastructure, roads, bridges. Two, never compete with private sector. I want to vote against anything that has, take for instance, this past couple of weeks, the parish government passed $2,000 worth of monetary budget to put in God we trust sign within the chambers of the council. I would have never voted for it. Because to me, $2,000 of parish money could have been used on that one pothole that's on Briarwood or that one pothole that's on Parkwood. To me, that is dysfunctional government. Number, number one, I want to say again, is that we as Iberia Parish residents, have to remember when we go to the polls of what we want in our government. Don't vote for him because he showed up to your funeral. Don't vote for him because he's, he's, your, he's your nephew or he's, he's your uncle. Vote for him because he wants to make the change. And that's where the problem lies in Iberia Parish. 
And I'm not scared to say that. That's why I'm here today. I'm not scared to buck the system a little bit. That's why I'm here today. I want a better New Iberia for my little daughter because she deserves it. Y'all deserve it. Iberia Parish deserves it. But Mr. Mr. God we trust is very popular now. Is there any way that we can get that also without using taxpayers' money? I'm sure, Ron, but why after 200 years does the parish council want to put it in this chamber? Do it at a perfect time when there's no money. This is things that we're talking about. Jimmy, every day, when we when we talk about reconstruction in the city of New Iberia, or new construction, how many neighborhood permits are coming up in the city of New Iberia today? Neighborhood? How many neighborhoods? Is any permits being taken up? Is the city growing? No. Lafayette Parish alone has pending 47 permits for new neighborhoods. Iberia Parish, too. Warren, let me ask you something. Consolidated like Lafayette said. Consolidated? Consolidation is a big word. Why would you uh, uh, turn down 11 bridges under construction? Why would you do that? Uh, why don't you do one or two or three and get it done and, 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 and turn around and knock down 11 at one time? It's, 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 I think that was the state issue. Right. Yeah, I think no, they, no, we had the parish in there. No, at the Port of Liberia, we had three bridges down. Couldn't even get around. For years. So why would right. you do that? Why? Why do well, that? Well, I think Ron made a... He, he, no, he but answer also, that question. So, I mean, and I would. They use point. The state, the state came in and they do a survey every year. The Department of Transportation, they'll get in the little boats, and they'll go in there and they'll look at it, and, and they'll do a pass inspection. And I think two of them failed. So they said, well, we'll knock them out now because once they fail, well, they shut two. Well, don't knock 11. Well, I mean. Uh, it's structurally unsafe. Thank what? you. It's structurally unsafe. Well, that should have been caught before. Hey, who is that? It's not safe, huh? Well, are you in Iberia Parish? Well, the state. The state came in. Are, are, are you Parish, are you parish uh, employee? No, that's it. Well, well, somebody's not doing their job. It, 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 you understand what I'm saying? You agree with me? Yeah. You don't knock 11 bridges down anyway yeah. you can't get around. And I'm glad Ronnie's here because Ronnie, oh, was a par- Ronnie was a parish resident for a long time. And Ronnie, why did you leave Iberia Parish? Because I didn't like the government in Iberia Parish. This is I, didn't, I did not like the government. I didn't like, the people. I didn't like the people. Some people. Starts at the government. <laughs> Starts at the government. And, and this well, is why sure. we're here. This is why we're here. My, my whole family came from Iberia Parish and came to Latvia. Yes, yeah, sir. But, but I think they have other remedies for the bridges that could be uh, probably make a change other than wait for the state to come in and take a year and a half, two years. Other remedies. And I'm talking to the parish councilman that are uh, the parish president. And they have ideas. And probably could make it a shorter term. Put the bridge back in operation. Anybody else? This is the time to speak, guys. Uh, Mr. Mendoza, I hate to call you out, but you've always been vocal. I mean, you've always had good discussion about good government and bad government. Do, after four years, is government good or bad? Since the last time we talked. Yeah, I mean, it's been this for quite some time in Iberia Power. <laughs> you know, like we've talked many, many times before, I believe, you know, that, that probably one of the most important uh, responsibilities of government is, is to use our tax dollars wisely, you know. And, and I mean, that covers a broad range of things, but, you know, when, when our roads are crumbling, you know, should money be put into a swimming pool or a campground, you know, that's the things that I look at. Thank you. And I know we need some of those things to try to, you know, tourism and, and, and things like that. They had all, it all feeds off of each other. But, you know, again, when you, you know, you can you can build all the new structures you want to build. If you've got to go down gravel roads to get to them, uh, you know, we're just losing ground. Uh, uh, immediately, I see, like, the same garden into the Lafayette Parish. And I want to make another point. He has a son that's a good friend of mine. And his son has moved out because there was more opportunities in Lafayette for him and his girlfriend. You're right. And it's happening every day that young people aren't relocating. At the you know, it, it just makes you scratch your head sometimes. I mean, it, it, you know, we, we've got an airport here. You know, we got rail access. we got the Port of Iberia. we got a lot, a lot of resources that in this parish that, you know, you would think that, uh, 
you know, we, we, we be every bit as, as uh, progressive as, as Lafayette is and then growing as much as those areas are, you know. Uh, I mean, you know, you kind of look at where we at, and, and, you know, when I was younger, over towards St. Mary Parish, you know, you didn't have quite as much growth, and then Iberia Parish seemed to be on fire for a while, and that's all kind of dotted off. And, you know, it just makes you wonder what's going on. So, like I said earlier, great resources. We have available resources to us. You know, we're only one of the very few parishes around here that can be accessed by land, water, and air. And rail. And rail, yeah. absolutely, rail. Anyone else? This is where it starts, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry? I don't support it whatsoever. But we're already $8 million into debt. So this would be my question. Is what do you suggest your parents do now? Because if I'm elected, what do you suggest I do? Because most of you vote with them on this one. So what do you suggest? I think you pass You pass beyond the no return. You almost have to support it because it's already there. Can't just go back. I disagree. I disagree. Unload it. Go ahead. Yeah. Unload it. And how? Just back to stop. Can't even get the offer for sale. Put it for sale. I want. I want to make a comment too that the guy that owns Cajun uh, homes. homes, he offered the Acadiana Fairgrounds permission to help construct that, and the, the committee on Acadiana Fairgrounds rejected. I want to just make that. Just not to, that can help to help them. No money. It, it was a volunteer deal he wanted to do. Well, you can blame that on Bernard Broussard and Paul Vincent. Huh? Yes, no. Mr. Mr. Ronald, I, I don't want to blame right. it. I don't want to blame on anybody. I just want to fix the problem. That's what I'm here. Hey, yeah, well, that's what I want to say something. You mentioned Paris president and the race for Paris president. There was someone running for Paris president that was part of that problem. He was one of the 14 that voted unanimously. They first five million dollars. So it's all talk about, but you need to make sure we need to make sure that he doesn't get in because he's part of the problem, not part of the solution. Well, say, say who he is. Who is it? That's Larry Reshore. Larry Reshore. At the beginning. Larry Reshore was one of 14 councilmen that voted unanimously for the first $5 million grant to the RV partner. So people need to remember that when you hear the poll. Good discussion. Here it is. It's a good discussion, man. Yeah. I'm glad this is happening. Yes, Do you think you can fit fill the shoes that you the, the, the guy you're replacing? Como, Como had a big voice now. A lot of guys didn't like him, but, but he had a point. He stood up. And, and that I want to read in, in a read on that. Troy was one of those guys when he believed something, even he's, if it went against the council, he should right. say and, and that to me is respect for him. But at the same time, as a parish council member, if someone calls you and they need something and you can't do it, still return that phone call. Because that phone call still matters. It matters to people, and, and, and it's just good business. And, and government should be good business. Anyone else? Chad, would you like to say anything? Chad's a candidate for District 14. Yeah, yeah. 14. Kind of like Warren, the same thing. I agree with her about $8 million on the RV park when we have 10, 11 bridges built right now. Our roads are crumbling. I think everybody feels the same way. But the pro biggest problem is, is lack of communication in, the, in those chambers of council. Right? Yeah. Nobody's getting along, nothing's getting done. Seems they're going there the to lead. fight. We don't have a leader at the top. That's right. I agree with that. We don't have a leader, but we don't have anybody pushing to lead in the <laughs> Maybe this guy can do it, huh? Just maybe this guy can do it. Or right. And him. You I'm just here for free food. <laughs> <laughs> Barkley, we always have good conversations with me and him, and he's always saying things that we can improve in our parish. What's one thing you think we can improve in this parish, Barkley? You travel to Galliano a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's just totally dysfunctional. And it, 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 it's the problem with like, the permits. You know, sometimes you can't hear a straight answer when you go to get a permit. Like, parish or city? You know, just the, the, whole, the government, like, uh, I, I think there was a lady, there was a lady. Working at the permit office, been there for years. She was the one you went to for everything. She did everything. I think she made Rome mad, so he put her in some closet in the courthouse. <laughs> with no desk. 
So call the junior college and start to the top. She's been in there forever, and like you know, you could go to her for answers. She help you. So it. problems with transparency. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's a joke. His son is trying to run it. It's a joke. I mean, you got to start. You know, that's not yes. one. Warren, yeah. Warren, what's your background? What's your background? Well, I'll tell you this. I, I've served on five state boards. I was uh, appointed by Governor Jindal to serve as a uh, as a board of supervisor for the Louisiana Community and Technical College. I served two years under that. I've served on the uh, Tuition Trust Authority Act. I was appointed by Jindal on that, which serviced uh, about $25 million of Louisiana state money that went to college tuitions. I also proposed a, a bill that would have changed the way that Louisiana paid its college students. It would have given a stipend to those students to go to school and if they made the recommend the rent of uh, the recommendation of grades, then the state would have paid them after that semester. But it it fell. But it, I thought it was a good idea because we see a lot of students that go in those colleges the first day, get that money and then they never return again. So there is a lot of waste within education. So I, I had mostly an educational background, but I did push a lot of bills through the Senate in the five years that I was there that were successful, that changed the way Louisiana did business. And I think that I'm able to bring that to the table here because I'm a good communicator. I'm able to go to somebody and say, look, this is what I believe. Tell me what you believe. Maybe we can meet in the middle. And, and that's how I am. I'm not a hard-headed guy unless I know at the end of the day we're not doing what's best for the people. And that's what I'm saying. And I'm very vocal for what I believe. You see it here today. I mean, I was 18 years old when I took on a guy that had been there for 30 years. And he told me he had no shop. But when I knocked those doors, he knew I was in business because I was going for the people. I was unsuccessful, but winning is not about, yeah, success is not about winning or losing. It's about making a difference. And I made a difference that night to show young people that we had an opportunity to do it. And after that, Natalie got elected. David Ditch was elected. And so young people after that day was able to come in. It's, you can't fear your government. I, I'll say this. I mean, I know there's no doubt in my mind that you will be at every meeting that you could possibly have made. <laughs> but I was looking over some some data on some of the councilmen that come to meetings. And when I, you know, when one of mine, he, he, had, he had like one meeting in a whole year. Because I was a kid his benefits or something. I don't know. But I mean, if you're, you know, some of these guys just get in there and they don't do crap. And, and you meet young guys that don't do that's it. And that's what it's about. Right was, on, man. You might make some mistakes, but at least you're doing something. And, and I'll tell you, at the end of the day, I'm going to vote what majority of my district wants. And, I, and I've told you already that not everyone is going to be pleased. And you can't. You're not going to be a part of the leader. No, absolutely not. And you see that. I mean, how many 27-year-olds are standing here today wanting to run for office? No. But I'm here for a reason because I want to service the people. I want to be a public servant, not a politician. And, and I'm going to tell you, Wayne's sitting right behind this young guy here. Wayne's been in Iberia Parish how long, Wayne? <laughs> Forever. <laughs> a long time, though, Wayne, right? We can agree on that, a long time. And every time we talk, we're always getting in arguments because Parish is dysfunctional, isn't it? So we've got some good ideas. I've really got some good ideas, and it's basically more or less the same thing I've heard since before we came to this meeting. So this is how we build. Next week, I'm going to start knocking doors. I'm going to get push cards made and start knocking doors. I've got a lot of young people like Lanny McCoy, Austin Kipp, even uh, Cy Bowden. Young people are willing to get involved, and that's what it takes. That's the number one thing is young people are willing to get involved. Um, any suggestions that anyone could give me that I'm going to leave with today? Do you understand? I would have to be open, be honest, and don't say anything you can't fulfill. You know, uh, if you promise something, be that the promise, follow through with it. Mr. Adcock? Hey, I'm here for the food. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've been knowing one for a long time. When I first met Warren, he ran for city council, failed attempt, but he was passionate about running. Even after the election was over, Warren used to come to my office and, and he was like a bull in a china closet. <laughs> and I would call him, 
warn you to come, and we would look at it. So, open the suggestion, but we keep saying that government is dysfunctional. Government is not dysfunctional. Government is disconnected. Yeah. It's disconnected from the people. The people that voted, the people, our voice is disconnected from the people, and that's what Warren is. Warren is the voice of the people. Whatever the background is, he is the vehicle for change. He is the voice of the people. The future. That's right. He is the voice of the people. I mean, look, we can talk about the RV park and, and, and a lot of hidden agendas that we talk about from the top to the bottom, and he's right. People vote against stuff that, that make perfectly good sense because they don't like the guy that proposed it, or they don't like this one, or they don't like that one. Rather than being the connection between the people and government, they throw everything out because they don't like who it is. One person, when we came to the RV park, we had an hour long discussion with a guy who was all for the RV park and stuff and this, and I let him talk and he was telling me how great it was and what it was gonna do. And I told him, my argument was, I don't trust parish government investing my money, period. Tell me your name, sir. Quentin Adcock. He was a businessman. And at the end of the conversation, I said, don't you have a business in our very parish? He said, well, I used to. I said, why you moved it to St. Martin Parish? He said, because the taxes were better. I said, okay, so you didn't trust your own government to work for you. And that's what we're talking about. It's, it's, it's about it dysfunctional. No, the government is built to work for the people. It's become disconnected. And that's why I believe in Warren Washington. That would be good for you. And, and, and I want to say this, too. And you can ask this guy. We've worked on many things together. Absolutely. When he was a, a liaison for the city. Even after I lost elections, we worked on traffic control together. Absolutely. Didn't? And, and, and tell them we had a meeting like this where 50% were pissed and 50% were happy. The ones that created the problem were part of the problem. Obviously. And we, at the end of the day, what did we do? We still shook hands, even though we disagreed with oh, each absolutely. other. And our traffic study showed something different than what our neighborhood showed. But we still agreed to disagree. And that's what's part he was of the voice of the people. And look, let me tell you something. I was 19 and I think I called the mayor out in the front of the page. Front page of Daylight Live here. That's what I we, said. Warren, you need to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you know what? After after that, me and her had respect for each other because she knew at the end of the day, if she didn't want to help me, I had the people behind me. And I got a petition, and I petitioned her all day long in that block. And there was one thing she never could take away from me. It's the people that supported me. And, she, and after that, we learned to work together. And that's what it takes. It takes somebody to, to, to stand up and say, this is not right, guys. This is not how we do things. It's easy to turn your back and let it happen. And that's what we've done for so long. Warren, I understand we took defense to that RV park. It's hard to even get out. Okay. But when it first came up, why was it brought to the people of the county? Well, see, this is what happens. When you elect a parish council member, you elect them as the voice of you. They become your governing body for your parish. They are, their, their obligation is to fulfill the laws of the parish. Your voice. Right. Right. Oh. right. <laughs> hey, can you get the uh, the area on my logo? Yeah, you extend this up. I can only check my mail right now. So no. But I'm glad that we had this tonight because I think we're gonna. Every one of us is gonna leave with something. And food, definitely, definitely food. But definitely, we're gonna leave that knowing that we're not the only one that feels this way. That most of this parish feels like we do today. But they still get elected. So this is my thing now, is that I've went to young people. I've registered 125 new young people in between, in between the ages of 18 and 30 that have never voted before. It's phenomenal how many people have never voted before. And I'm going to use that to my benefit because I want young people to start getting involved. And this is what needs to happen now. It's that the baby boomers are out the door, the newcomers are time, it's time to come in. So if we're not quite out the door yet. Well, y'all good voters, so I'll say that. Y'all definitely good voters. But, uh, okay, Mr. 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 Ryan right here is probably out the door. Well, Ryan was before the baby boomer. <laughs> but Ronnie was, he'll tell you, because we have this discussion almost every day. He'll tell you how he helped create, build the, the Port of Iberia. And that was one of the, mm -hmm. I say the fathers of the Port of Iberia was there. Yeah. From the beginning. People don't even know that. I know that. And it takes people like Ronnie Rawson. Seven, seven rigs in one year in there. Thank Way you. back. You know? 
Okay, so I'm gonna ask somebody. This is the last time before we really get it kicked off. Does anyone else want to offer any more advice or just make a statement?